My experience with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is an interesting one. It's kind of odd how you can come across certain things depending on the time or resources you have available. It can be very interesting and strange. JoJo is actually one of those anime that I came across when I sort of rediscovered my interest in anime a few years back, which actually partially inspired me to make YouTube videos in the first place. Along with shows like Hunter x Hunter and Yu Yu Hakusho, JoJo would be one of those classic series that would rejuvenate my interest in the medium. Before the reboot, which adapted previously untouched arcs and helped popularize the story, JoJo was regulated to that cult status. It was kind of obscure, but not obscure enough to be mostly unknown. In truth, I think JoJo remained a conversation piece primarily due to the villain Dio. He, of course, was introduced to Western audiences in the OVA series from the 1990s. The anime covered Stardust Crusaders, albeit skipping over a number of details, I'm looking at you Darby the Gamer, but must have had an impact enough to make a pretty significant impression in pop culture. I'm not sure what it is about the OVAs from the 80s and 90s, but there is something to that gritty nature and downright exploitative nature of many of those titles that reminds me of a time when anime was mostly found in special interest sections of video stores. Anybody remember those? Anything that wasn't deemed a kid's show back then and horribly butchered by weak translations was only accessible through whatever videos reached the US. I'm glad anime is more mainstream these days, though I think that the commercialized nature of it has certainly limited some of the creativity and less boundaries are pushed. I feel like JoJo is one of those shows that got caught up in this wave of late night TV on the Sci-Fi Channel and other similar programs that probably blew the mind of many teenagers back in the 90s. I discovered it a bit later, of course, though I had heard of Dio making a top list of great villains once or twice. I think this is primarily due to his presence, being a tough, nearly invincible vampire who was essentially a disembodied head which was using the body of his archenemy as a host. Then of course he had that stand, Da Warudo, which is one of the most broken powers I've ever seen. Other than that, my friend the anime hero recommended I check out the OVA as an introduction to the series. I'm glad he did, since it was really an addicting little show. It apparently had a weird production history, as the last part of the arc was adapted first, and then the first half was released some years later. So the animation is a little bit different. I would really like to know how that happened, as I've never really come across anything like that before. It must have been confusing for anyone who wasn't reading the manga at the time, as they don't give you much background on who the characters are or what they're even doing, at least in that second half. Thankfully, due to the power of the INTERNET, I was able to watch them in chronological order. I believe this footage was used for the JoJo Abridged series as well, which is pretty funny if you check it out. I'm not sure why it was decided why skipping to Stardust Crusaders was the best way to go. Maybe the books were selling well at the time and they wanted to capitalize on the hype of the comic. I can say that the OVA does give enough introduction to the characters and lore to follow along pretty easily what's going on. It doesn't take too much to understand the plot. It's pretty straightforward. Jotaro and the others have to stop this bad guy so that Jotaro's mother doesn't die. In that sense, it's a very basic adventure action narrative. We can go to a place and fight a guy, then repeat until we get to the boss. It's kind of like a beat-em-up video game. I also really like the characters. They all had some pretty memorable costume designs and distinct personalities. I think the idea of stands as powers, a sort of a spirit avatar with distinct abilities, offers some really interesting and varied ways for combat. Jotaro was a quiet, no-nonsense tough guy I'm sure most young viewers could get behind. And that chain, man, what style! <laughs> I also think Joseph really balanced him out here as a mentor figure, even though he doesn't get as much of a chance to shine in this arc when it comes to combat. He still services a good purpose. Abdel was also kind of stoic, but wiser and more mature than Jotaro. He also had my favorite stand in that arc. I don't know why, but I thought that that flaming bird provided some great imagery. Then there was Kigoin, who I don't actually remember that well, except that he was kind of absent for a while from the main battle until he kind of arrives to help save the day? <laughs> he took the place of that rival that kind of switches sides. Then there's Ponarev. I know people love this guy, but he came off to me as kind of annoying. I guess he probably was the best in terms of character growth of the group but I still kind of wish he would have died instead of Abdal, oh, spoilers, who goes out in a brutal fashion, by the way. I'll never forget it. When I saw his death, it was chilling. That pun was only partially intended, by the way. In all seriousness, though, Crusaders had some great henchmen. Darby the Gambler provided some of the most tension with his stand, nearly trapping all the heroes in this game of chance. And that accent in the dub is still pretty memorable. My friends and I quoted it online here for years. 
Get yourself a drink, ya! Yeah. I also really like Vanilla Ice, <laughs> as his dimensional pocket ability is honestly one of the scariest moments upon his reveal. I feel like that had potential to be more OP than Dio's ability. Then we come to Dio himself, who probably deserves his own video at some point. I'll just say that the final battle between Jotaro and Dio is probably the most tense, nail-biting face-off I've ever watched. It wasn't all about brute strength, and Jotaro literally had to hold his breath in fear that Dio would notice him at one point. It was intense! I think there was enough potential to explore why Dio had such a connection with the Joestars, and a bigger potential for universe growth with the Speedwagon organization and so forth. Dio was one of those villains that the more complexity they added onto him, the more evil he seemed to be. For whatever reason, JoJo has been updated, bringing more exposure and popularity to the series. The new, anim the new anime has some gorgeous, quirky animation and follows the story with much more detail, even expanding on this OVA. Still, my experience with JoJo left a great impression on me, and I'd encourage anyone who hasn't seen it to check it out. It's a pretty good intro. Anyway guys, that was my little retrospective on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the OVA for Stardust Crusaders. I'm thinking to do more of these in the future, as well as maybe with some other shows that are anime or maybe some western cartoons or just things I'm interested in. Uh, please feel free if you guys have any requests for character analysis or similar discussions on other shows or topics, please feel free to let me know. Please feel free to check out some of the other channels I'm associated with, like the Phantom Group and some of the great people that produce content over there, and of course Dan reviews it. And yeah, I'll be making more videos here when I can, and in the meantime, stay magical.